God bless you and welcome to Bethel Family Worship Center live stream. Sit and share Bible study. Listen, it's going to be an exciting night tonight. Yeah. Share it, tell somebody we are going to have a little bit of church in this place tonight. Yeah. Yeah. There's a train. is coming and people are going to get on and get off yeah. get on and get off going to discuss tonight is either going to make you get on the train and stay and if you've been on the train it's going to make you get off and not get back on it again so share like like and share and subscribe do your virtual evangelism share it with three other people tell them to get on board bishop is live tonight and we are teaching on the command center i got overseer Ronnie King here with me tonight, and we're going to be talking this thing out. His brand new book is out, Kicking and Popping. It's the Command Center, the Touch of the Midas. We're going to talk a little bit about the Midas touch and so on and so forth. There's a train coming. My God, my God. Okay, so like, share, share, like, and subscribe. Get everybody on board. I'm waiting for you to join as you're joining us, as you're joining us. I pray tonight in the name of Jesus that your eyes of enlightenment would be open and your ears of understanding would be unstopped, that you might receive the word of the Lord richly tonight in the name of Jesus. This is the very first interview that me and overseers had on the book, so it should be exciting. It should carry us some places. Thank you. I see that you're joining, you're joining, you're joining, you're coming on. This is not going to be long. You know, Tuesday nights are not long, so uh, get yourself situated. I pray that you've already gotten your book. Uh, um, you can, they can get it online, right? They can get, get it online. Huh? R L King Shop. R E what? R L King. R L King Shop. So they can get it on 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 online, and I know it's some other goodies that you have uh, on there. All right, so I'm with the executive pastor of Bethel Family Worship Center Church, Overseer Ronnie King. He's overseer in Clert International Assemblies, executive pastor here at Bethel. He's been with me from day one. Us opening up, opening up this church, opening up this church from day one. Yes. And, uh, um, you know, uh, the, in, in, the, in the movie, The Color Purple, they, it says nothing will keep me from it. Right. So we're not restarting anything. Mm -hmm. The sound went bad. We're going to keep on keep because on. we're in the command center. Yes. And yes. things happen in, the, uh, in life that you have to manage and keep the movement of. And so we're going to be discussing that on tonight. Let's start off by um, asking you how did the book come about? Bishop, uh, you spoke with me I think a year and a half ago and said, you need to write a book. I said, write a book? What am I going to write a book about? You know, I've been with you for 20-some uh, years. I've seen you write books off the top of your head. You can just get up and preach a sermon and they've got a book. Well, out. actually, you've been with me longer than 20 years. Now, church has been 20 years. 26 years. 20, you've been 20. with me longer than 26 years. Let's say about 40 years. Probably. Right, because we started, remember, we, we ran the, the longest running revival in the city of yes, Durham. Sir. Apostolic House of Durham. Apostolic House of Durham. 1985. I didn't have no children. I had hair. I think <laughs> I, I had just got married. I didn't have none of that no hair either. <laughs> yes, right. Well, right. I had hair. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. when I think, I think of in terms of the beginning of the church, 
you know, we go way, way back, back yeah. way back. You know, like in Genesis, the Genesis, God created heaven and earth, but it starts before then. Yeah, right, so right, you right, got to right. know what, what, what starting so, yeah, point are we a talking A point of about? reference, mm -hmm. that's it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. and you said you need to write a book. So the only thing I know to write right now uh, is just maybe my story, my story. And then I said, wow, it, I, I, I got a story, yeah. a, a lot of stories. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. I, and I didn't realize until I started writing how many stories that I had. Then I didn't realize how many stories that I didn't write in the book. So, but I had to write those that were pertinent to what the, the message that I was trying to give in this book. And as I started writing, I was, I was sending you texts at night. And uh, I would just share with you things. You said, wow, you would never add or change anything. You said, just keep writing, keep writing. And I said, well, Bishop, what do you think about this? I'm going to say this. He said, just say it. Tell your story. Tell your story. And I just kept writing. And about from, from 1 in the morning to like 3.30 or 4 in the morning, I would just write, 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 write. And that went on for about a year. About a year, yeah. just writing. Yeah. And I would turn it over to our publishers, uh, to Miller Daniels. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. I turned it over to her, and she was giving some ideas. I'd keep writing and writing. And I, what I did, I just put all the stories together. I just told them just, just straight out. And there was nothing added, nothing tracked. Yeah. See, what, what I didn't want to happen is um, a George Bloomer's book uh, with a king's face on it. Right. It had to be your story. Yes. And, um, uh, you know, Sometimes I work with some people who do interior decorating, mm -hmm. and they'll go into a person's house. The person said, "Put yellow and green and orange," and the interior decorator said, "I don't like yellow, green, orange." Well, it ain't, it ain't your house. Yes. If you're going to decorate, if you're going to be a publisher, now you can give some clues, but you have to first get the person and the personality of, of the person's reality out of what they're actually saying. And I don't like yellow curtains. Well, you don't have to live in this house. Well, I'm not going to put yellow curtains up because I don't like it. Well, then you're not an interior decorator. You are a narcissist. You're a control freak. You have to allow the person to put out what's in them. And that's what I was pushing. You used to say, you would say, oh, well, should I write this? And I said, no, just, just write. If you just write every day, every day, just with a thought. Mm -hmm. And if you're riding in the car and a thought comes to you, pull out your tape mm -hmm. recorder, pull out your phone, talk into right. it, right? And when you get it all together, it all come out. They say what does not come out in the wash will come out in the rinse. Wow. Wow. Hmm? Wow. It's true. Wow. It's coming out. Yes. You know, so. Yes. And I, was come up, I would come up to your house sometime. We'd be standing at the food, at the food uh, court and we would talk. And you'd say, Bishop, I, can, I, I just wrote this, 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 this. You said, well, right. It's okay. Right. I, right. I wrote, I wrote, I wrote. You said, it's okay. And you would, I would send copies of you to read and you would read it. And, you would never critique me or anything. You never said nothing. So I just kept writing and kept writing and kept writing and kept writing. And, and about a year, I had finished it. And I said, wow. And I, was, I turned it over to the publishers. And um, they said, well, wow, this is, a, this is great. I said, really? They said, yes, this is some great stuff. I said, well, really? I said, so, uh, I said, what was your favorite part? And they would give, tell me their, the parts in there that would happen. I said, wow. And I started, when I started thinking, I started to But you know, I tell stories differently from you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I need to throw something in <laughs> yeah. there that you missed. Um, you were finished with the book, and then things started happening. Yeah, mm -hmm. And I told you what, you're not finished. Not finished. Mm -hmm. so the keeper, because I think you were racing to, to, towards something to get someplace. And um, it, this, 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 it, it, it really, really takes time. Um, and then I didn't want people uh, to input on your stories. They weren't there. Right. You know, now, now in, in storytelling, a story, it could, be, it could be true, but not told well. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's like the Democrats and the Republicans. The Republicans know how to tell a story, the mm -hmm. Democrats don't. Right. So now you have this president that's doing a whole lot of things, but nobody knows what nobody it is. Knows. No, nobody knows what's going on, so now they're mad at him, and he's doing some great things, but they don't know how to tell a story. I wanted you to tell your story, and I just wanted to be there to help you tell it, to be able to say, Put this over here. Do this. 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 And uh, that's how the. Uh, what was the book first named? It was called the Command Center. Yeah. Second in command. Second in so command. So I wrote from a standpoint of command center, second in command. For I think for about three quarters of the year. This. That's what I was. That was my mindset. Mm -hmm. Command center, second in command. But then we did a conference at Launch Ministries, mm -hmm. and then I said, they, you said I want to put you up in the conference to speak on maybe one of the chapters of your book, and I said. Um, but I remember something you always tell me down through the years. And at and, and this point, it was not in the book yet. We hadn't even mentioned it. You said, you know what? You need to have the Midas touch. Mm -hmm. The Midas, when they, whenever you do stuff, you always you leave something, something will be hanging, a little dust will be there. Get the dust off or straighten it up. That's the Midas touch. I said, what I'm going to talk about in the conference at Launch Ministries is the Midas touch. And so we did a cover and everything. 
And then everything, wait a minute, hold up. <laughs> hold up, wait a minute. I mean, the book was about finished. Okay, and all of a sudden, it's like the icing on the cake, the Midas touch. It yeah. Is, mm -hmm. And then I called you and I said, the Midas touch is, uh, uh, it is um, already uh, belongs to oh, someone. Belongs to someone. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and uh, it's, it, when you say Midas touch, you think about a muffler. Mm -hmm. And so I said, uh, so let's flip it mm -hmm. and do the touch of the Midas. The touch of the Midas. Mm -hmm. You always had that gift. You, you've got that gift. Like if we do a play or something, we did a whole play, you would come in there and you would just say, touch, move this here. Move that there. And that with them, them two little moves would blow everything out of the water. Nobody else had that. You would always, that's a gift that you have. And, and I, I pray that, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's powerful. Yeah. It's the touch of the Midas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the touch of the Midas. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so we looked up Midas, mm -hmm. what a Midas is, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth like that. And the Midas was the one who everything he touched turned to gold. Turned to gold. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that, that's extremely in, in, important. But I read somewhere, and this is crazy, maybe for your next book and mm -hmm. stuff like that, I read that the Midas has no clothes. Mm. So the Midas is naked. He's transparent. Wow. So he's, he doesn't, he's, and that's how you are. He doesn't, he's not after anything. Mm -hmm. He's only there to make things better. Wow. You, you understand what right. I'm saying? He's not behind, you, you know, so, 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 so that was uh, very, very important. Um, my gift is to try to make sure that people in their right place. That's why this little discussion we had before you started, I said, pull the person in. And because they're here because they need the touch of the Midas. And before the night's out, we're gonna have that discussion with those people. I think this is strategic. So, um, oh, and then the cover. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the cover came right at the end. I mean, we, was, we, we, no, we, we just hit, you know, hit a writer's block. We were just trying to figure out what can we do for a cover. People, you know, we'd get presentation. Nah, this is not it. Well, because the, nothing that the cover that we had mm -hmm. spoke to the message that right, we were dealing right. with. Yeah. We were still pushing the command center, second of command, so we had it looking like a church with a pulpit. And that we, we worked it for a while, but then the Midas, the great, put his touch on it. Mm. Understand? The Midas touched the Midas, um, then the Midas <laughs> touched the, touch the book. And the book is gold. <laughs> right. But this book is, Bishop, I thank you so much. It's so, it's so surreal. Uh, that, uh, it's so, I still can't believe, I, you know, it's amazing that the, the experiences that God has brought me through and me and you through through the years has been tremendous. Every lesson that. And it's a, and, and it's a real book, and uh, it's a trademark size book, and um, it's real stories in it. And it's not a whole bunch of junk just thrown together. Mm -mm. It's things that really, really happen. Really happen. And it's, it's still beginning to happen. I'm mm -hmm. seeing the touch of the Midas mm -hmm. um, here in the, in, oh, yes. in, 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 in the church. Yes. Um, I do want you to uh, focus at one point somewhere along the line on um, um, being able to see certain things, mm -hmm. see them before they, before it actually happens. You know, um, when, I was a, when I was a pastor's assistant or an attendant, um, I knew when my pastor's sweat docks was gonna open up. So I had the handkerchief before it actually fell. And there was times I would give it to him and he said, I don't need that. And then turn right back and say, Take. and while I was giving it to him, his sweat docks were opening up because I put all of my attention on the assignment that I had. And uh, that makes me, um, I guess, that would get on the nerves of a lot of people because I, I'm seeing stuff that the people who are getting paid to do it is not seeing. And it make me wonder what the heck I'm paying them for. I don't mean to be like that, but the touch of the Midas is a powerful, powerful thing. I'll say this, um, I was, on a platform, getting ready to go preach in our conference, the Word Network was having a big um, partners conference. People were there from all over the country, around the world. Jamal Bryant was the speaker. And we was in the back room. And he was going to speak for me that night. And he came out and uh, he sat down. And uh, he was sitting, crossed his legs, he was on his 
iPad, preparing this message and so on and so forth like that. And I went to speak to get ready to announce him. And I turned around, I looked, and there was a red thread on his shoulder. A red thread on his shoulder he had, he had on black. And I'm up talking and I saw it. And so I said, at this time, Jamal Bryant. And as he came over to me, I hugged him and pulled the thread off of his jacket and went and sat down and, and he was well. When the service was over, I said, this is what I pulled off of your jacket. He started laughing. He said, oh my God. And I'll tell you the rest of the story in private. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the touch of the Midas. Of the Midas. You follow what I'm saying? That thread <laughs> on camera mm -hmm. would have done something different for the night. And you have some people who see stuff like that and don't make any effort to move it. I want people around me that are butlers and it is not condescending. Uh, a few moments ago, I was preparing for a message, and so I was putting my tie on, and I'm standing up in the platform, and the craziest thing happened. Your son, Junior, who don't know how to tie a tie, mm -hmm. he can't tie a tie. Right. That nigga can't tie a tie. <laughs> you know what he did? What? He came over and fixed my collar while I was getting ready to go on the camera. That's the touch of the Midas. He can't fix, he can't tie a tie, but he knows when the tie is not properly in position or in its right place. And that's who you want around you. You want people looking out for you and covering you. So if we had to discuss something out of the book tonight, what would it be? One chapter is stick. And let me say this, mm -hmm. and I'm encouraging all of the other writers inside our church, like uh, uh, Valerie Morrow, because Valerie Morrow was the, well, one of the first ones to write a, write, write a book. Uh, um, uh, but guess what's happened? In the progressive time, as time progressed and moved on, there are things under the title of a book that is not in the book, so we need to redo that whole piece there. And um, she puts that COVID thing in this book, and how that COVID kings came up, and how I challenged her on that steps out there, and the different strains that were coming down, so the brother. And so I want to encourage all of those of you who are in the ministry who have a book on the inside of you, a real book on the inside of you, and you're willing to make the investment in your life. Don't come to me asking me to pay for it. The investment in your life, it, um, it will happen. And miraculously, this book got paid for, and so just oh, yeah. like everything else, right? Yes, and yes. We ain't in debt, are we? Oh, no, no. And never even felt it, did it? And we put thousands of dollars into the production of, 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 of the book and God is blessing. Okay. Well, Bishop, there are two stories in this book. I just want to talk one. One, is, is, one chapter is called Sit Down Servant. And it's the time that I was sat down for a period of like six or seven years. You know, I was green in ministry, would make a lot of mistakes, and it, it, I had to be sat down. And I was sat down. But while I was sat down, I had Deacon Gray was formed. So just during that time of being disciplined, if you can take the time that you're disciplined and use it wisely, that could be the greatest time of your life instead of running to another church, or to another ministry, to another leader, to whatever. If you can take that time of being disciplined and sit down and see what is God trying to teach. You thinking he, he, don't, he, uh, he don't like me or he just sat me down, you want to use somebody else who graded me. No, God is saying no. There's something else in you that I want to develop. And so while you're sitting there, something else is coming out of you. Now there's another whole stream of income uh, doing comedy. I, I learned while I was being disciplined. So sometimes servant, you have to sit down. Wow. So, you know, I didn't know that. I, I knew about the sit down part and I knew about the great part, but I didn't know that it, it was, was in concert time. with that. Mm -hmm. Wow, really? Yes. I think you're off. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Because mm -hmm. you remember I was sat down three times. <laughs> yeah, really. Mm -hmm. I only remember one. But remember, remember, remember this conversation. We was in a meeting. You put me on. You were gonna put me on probation. But remember, I was already on probation, so, <laughs> <laughs> so you couldn't put me on probation. 
<laughs> Let me tell you about the Midas touch. Let me tell you about the touch of the Midas. One time, you was, you, you was sat down during the time we were approaching tent crusade time. I said, the devil is alive. You sit down, days is over. <laughs> I sit him down after the tent go off. <laughs> Right. And even during the tent now, all kind of problems be arising and stuff like that, and people be running around, but I know exactly what to do. I mean, because I've, I've gone through, I've been under, now I can get I can understanding. Because we've done this before, you know? And so anything that happened in the church now in terms of problems, we've already done it before. I said, well, look, we've moved this here, and this happened. They said, no, because if you put the equation together, the two don't, we ain't worried about the equation right now. Just, just move this. You know, just move that, just over, move there, that over there, be quiet, put that there, though, and watch and this And that's happen. how I think. You know, people think different because the, the, way, the way God makes them. And, you know, we don't, we don't fault that, but I think a different way because I'm from Goldsboro, the Dusty Rose. I think in terms of the tobacco barns and working in the fields and tie, just, 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 just tie it up and it'll be all right. They said, no, you can't, put, you can't tie it up. You got to put three staples on the bottom and three on the okay, well, you know, and it's, I think the, it's in, the way you're thinking. Right, here. and I think in terms of skyscrapers, mm -hmm. I'm from a big city. And so I think in terms of uh, the higher monkey climbs, the more he's exposed. The less exposure, the better income. The more exposure, the less, the, the less income. It's the, it's the battle between uh, fame and fortune. And so, you know, you got these Negroes that are just all famous. Just stuck out and all that kind of stuff like that. And they got to come to us for us to pay their right. bills. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> you know, right. and then the quiet ones are really, really, you know, uh, someone said that, uh, um, that, uh, how did that go? That uh, real money is quiet and fake money is loud. You must got a lot of money. <laughs> well, Bishop, when I first came You didn't answer that. <laughs> uh, Bishop, when I first <laughs> When I first came to this church, you know, people come with, they, they want to be this, they want you to make up, but I never had any, I didn't, I didn't, I, none of this was in my mind when I first joined the church. The only thing I knew, I saw you, I just wanted to, to serve this man. I, I didn't know, I think I was just a reverend or whatever. We started setting up chairs, putting down chairs, that's all I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, God started elevating me. I'm saying, okay, um, I didn't want to do all this. I, I'm good when he put in front of people and stuff like that, and I can't have talk that good. You know, as good as, you know, the. The educated person. You and me together. You know, mm -hmm. I get, I well, at least you went to college. <laughs> a little bit. I did go to the university, too. Right. I went to SCU. Right. Shirley Caesar University. <laughs> right. So, you know, I, could, <laughs> and I always say, like you would say, I wasn't as smart as a lot of people that could do it better. And that's not a down on me, but it's just, it's just it's what it is. I see things a different way. Because God designed us all for his purpose. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we all are designed differently. So, uh, I mean, God says, probably. During the time, I never expected anything. Because, and I say, you know, a lot of folks, they, they, they came and they had great ministry. Now they would preach the house down. And I'm saying, wow, I wish I could preach like that. And they, they left me. They're going on. You know, we, I'm still growing. And where they at now? Go. And doing what? Where they doing, going? Right. Doing nothing. nothing. I, mean, I mean, just, I mean, I've seen them come through and just, just go where. People, said, wow. people want, they want the production, but they don't want the process. And um, they just you know, it, they just want it overnight. It, it, it just don't work. But you know what? Um, uh, uh, you, Morrow, and Graham, um, other churches, uh, the elders have like uh, serious conflicts constantly. We don't have that here. Why not? In sync with each other. We never. We never. We, 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 we never had. When your father, we never had a conflict. Yet. Never. Mm -hmm. If he had a problem with me, he'll say, King, so and so, so. I say, Wow. And we'll, we'll, we'll say, Okay, I'm sorry, blah, 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 blah. We move right on. We don't go three and four weeks, you know, ground, you know. It's not, it's not, mm -mm, nothing like that. And never. they're not people who have hidden agendas. Mm -hmm. The battles and the fights come from sometimes from people who don't know who they are, and they come here for an identity, a position in identity, to find out who they are. And that's a process and also. They demand you to see who they are. And, you, and then you want to ask them, but well, the, who are you? But the R that they want me to see is not there. Right. And that's what and the who ain't either. And the who ain't there either. Yeah. <laughs> and they start fighting the other people. That's where the fight comes in. Now they see somebody else. And instead of coming, you know. You know, um, one, uh, one day, uh, Yolanda, what's her last name? 
flowers. flowers. You learned the flowers. You said learned the flowers, you pointed to where she said that. Yeah, I <laughs> and I always do the same, even when I'm not there, I go like that. <laughs> okay, um, Yolanda Flowers is, a, is, is, is a, a great example of when she came to the church, how I told you, oh, I'm, I'm going to break her because there's something deep. On, and when I say break her, I didn't mean break her in, in, the, the, in, the, in the bad way, in any sense like that. That you, well, what you got? And uh, I think that's probably one of the first people that you agreed to almost immediately. Mm -hmm. You say, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you know, some of you bring, I say, ah. Right, right, right. But you know, I don't do that as much now. You, know, now, don't, you do don't do it at all. Right, right, right. So they, I they just watch it for a while. They can't get one elevation out of you. Yeah. <laughs> you know why, right? Because, you know, your third eye is open. Um, and she used to clap her hands in support of the witch call. And there were people in there that would make fun of that. And uh, so, mm -hmm. and one time she did it while this preaching was going on and it kind of disturbed me a little bit. Not in a, I just, to, to clap your hands don't stop, but it, it has to be done at the, 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 the right time and, and so on and so on. And I didn't know how that, how that set. But let me share this with you. She stayed after that. That let me know we had a rock. We just had to get all the witch calls around it. And uh, the minute the pandemic hit, that's when God started raising her up and several others in here. You know, the Bible says, if you can't, if you can't endure chastisement, then you're bastards and not <laughs> sons. That's your gift. We all have our gifts. Your gift is to find the scripture for what I say. So if I've ever beaten up somebody, yeah, find the scripture. Find the scripture. <laughs> if I'm smoking, if I'm smoking, if I'm smoking, find the scripture. Oh, yeah. I got one for that. <laughs> What's that? Uh, uh, Moses. Did, Moses was, he was smoking. Yeah, he was a smoker. <laughs> Ain't that something? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't want to use this because right. the musicians were. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah, be Moses wasn't just smoking tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> Moses was smoking some other stuff. <laughs> That is, that, is, that is amazing, yeah. So the second thing you would talk about would be what? Uh, the covenant breaker. Mm -hmm. um, how, you remember the time that, uh, I think the first anniversary we had from the church, you called me up and you know, you, you gave me a ring. But see, that was during the time that I was having hardships in life. I meant hard, life was hard. It was like in, like, like in 2000, I mean hard, hard, hard. You got two children and family and just hard. I mean, Y'all know what I'm talking about, hard. And you gave me a ring, and uh, you know that night it was covenant, and everybody, even Deacon Metals were crying. It was a wonderful night. You you, you presented me the ring, a covenant. I, that's never happened to me in my life. That meant, that was powerful to me. I think maybe about a month later, like I said, things were hard. Yes. Hard, hard, and um, I didn't have nothing expensive around me at the time. Driving an old car, or everything was old. But I looked at the ring. I said, I wonder how much I can get for this ring. Hmm. So I took the ring to the pawn shop, and I. Pawn the ring. Let me tell you how much I got for the ring. You want me to tell you? Sure. It's up to you. They gave me $40 for the ring. So I sold our covenant for $40. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you a question. How much are you selling your, your covenant for? And, and, and I think I did it twice. I did it twice. During, in that, that, it, there, was, there was a season of years where it was horrible. But I thank God through and by, and you think you found out about it. And I, the reason how you found out about it because when you first gave me the ring, that's the only ring I, I, I praise the Lord with. I had it. I was, just, I, I was happy. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all, all day and I'm waving my hand. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. He's a great God. You know, he's powerful. But then you saw my hand, there was no ring on it. You, you said, where's the ring? I said, oh, oh it's, 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 it. but see, you're a spiritual man. Where's the ring? I said, oh, oh, it's safe. And then I think, and my wife said, oh, he pawned the ring. Mm -hmm. Hey, will you shut up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, and now, you know, and then you say, what? Yeah. And uh, you pawned the ring. That, it, I said, they bought a covenant. The covenant ain't in no ring. The covenant is the covenant. And then you said, no, you broke the covenant. And from that day for about five years, it was a descend, mm -hmm. a descend. I mean, a little descend. And I, I wasn't able to tell it all in this book or the Bible, like the, like the scripture said, the world's going to be able to hold all the books that yes. happened in my descent. There's some things that happen that, you know, only God can tell you. That's a great chapter, that's a great chapter or title for a book, In My Descent. In My Descent. Yeah, 
but um, that, that, that powerful, that, that, that um, moved me just then almost to tears because I remember the situation, you know, and, and I've, had, I've had pawn shop days also, mm -hmm. of course. It wasn't in the days that you, 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 you it wasn't in, you know, 1996. Mm -hmm. when, once we started the church, I was already right, a right. millionaire, successful, what have you. But, but I've had those, that, 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 those days, and that's why, and I had a watch that uh, was like $6,000, and I went to the pawn shop, and things were very hard, and they gave me $400 for mm -hmm. a six thousand dollar watch on the loan and uh they prayed upon me they got the watch and they knew that if i had to pawn this watch that is six thousand mm -hmm. for four hundred i would never be able to come up with the four hundred plus the interest to pay it back, pay it back. but how wrong they were <laughs> 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 but i but you know i know those i know those days and uh, um the other day in preaching uh closing out one of the messages on david that presence, that anointing came on me, like what you're talking about right now. And um, it speaks deeply to me about um, a broken heart. And um, I've, I've, I've seen you through your broken heart seasons, mm. you know, and um, that it just moved me in a, I gotta get myself together. It just moved yeah. me in a different way. Yeah, why are you getting yourself together? You mentioned, uh, this, this, would be a, this would be another book, whatever. You told, you told me in 1997, we were, all the brothers were together. We had about 50 of them. You said, King, you said, you're Bethel's, you're my test project. You're my test project. And that, that comes to me, you know, it's at different times. I said, wow, wow, wow. And all the guys that were there during that time were not here. None of them. I think Dick Mellis, he wasn't even at that time. He wasn't, he wasn't not at that gathering, but none of them are here to see the, the, the test project. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So did, I'm, I am a prime example that Bishop, June, Bishop George Bloom's ministry works. If we could turn a green person like me into who I am today, your ministry is effective and it has power. And it, ha and it has impact. If you can follow the instructions and listen and can stay here long enough, you will get what you need. That's the key. You got to sit, you got to, if you say sit down, you got to sit down and you got to stay there and watch God do great things in you. Yeah. This is, this is, that's why I said I was gonna stick with you until one of us dies and, and first. And you I, first. I hope it ain't me, you know. <laughs> you, you, you first. Because, you can go. You, know, yeah. you know, God, uh, you know, it you know it. remember my service, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I think we're going to be around for a long, long time, and we're going to be strong, young and strong because of the way we treat people. I went up this weekend to see Bishop Campbell mm -hmm. at Bible Way, who I've, who I've known for 40 years. And I went to see him. He's 92 years old. Listen to me, as sharp as he was when he was 30. His brain, oh, I'm telling you, sharp as he could be. And he sat there and he said something, he said something, thank you, that is very, very powerful. He said, I'm sitting in this room and uh, George Bloomer came to see me. And he clutched both of his hands as he sat in the chair. He said, George Bloomer came to see me. And when he said it like that, I was tempted to look over my shoulder to see who he was talking about. Victor and uh, JR was in the room when we first got in there, because he said that later on when we first got in there, and he said, Good to see you. I went over and I sat on the other side. He said, y'all sit down. He said, you know what I like about this man? What, what, do you remember what he said? What'd he say? 
He said, what I like about you, it's your character. I almost looked over my shoulder again. Because I'm not working on trying to do it. It's organic. It's natural. He said, it's your character. He said, all the years I've known you and all the preachers we dealt with, I ain't never heard nobody say that Bloomer tried to swindle me out of anything. He said, even in bad times, when you could have taken people down, you just, it's your character. Boy, that thing, that moved me. He said, George Bloomer came to see me. Wow. So I didn't want to be, I'm not being arrogant or trying to keep my head filled up. So I leaned into him and I said, what did you mean by that? He said, that's good. That's good. That you don't know it. Mm. And I'm praying that you don't know it. That's confirmation to what T.D. Jakes told me when I was talking to him about the ring. Mm -hmm. He said, see, you don't know who you are. And I'm praying that you never find out because there's a demon called arrogance that is hidden there or sitting there waiting for the opportunity to drive. Let's close with this command center to touch of the Midas. <sighs> he said, I have a lot of time. Bishop Campbell, he says, so I'm sitting here right now and I'm repenting to God for how I ran this church down through the years. So I'm thinking about the time when I went to the altar and the guy was tearing for the Holy Ghost and I smelled alcohol on him and I said, get up, you ain't getting no Holy Ghost because you smell alcohol. He said, I'm repenting for that. I said, Bishop, when did that happen? He said, 60 years ago. I'm repenting for that. See, it's his character talking. He's laying things in place, getting all the things in order. He said, you didn't come down here to see me for this appointment. You came to see me because God trusts us with each other. Good day in the morning. Man, I still have not gotten over it. And when I preached a Sunday or two ago, he unlocked in me the part of me that was holding me hostage to myself. And I was able to talk about it. That's the Midas touch. That's the touch of the Midas to, to be able to share with the congregation. I'm still hurt. I'm still broken. I'm still torn. And when I make my decision, I want to make a right decision. And I want it to be honest and pure. And I want people to be able to trust me. I want the right woman in my life to trust me that I wouldn't go out on her. I'm not that person now. To be able to be free enough to articulate it had to come from that meeting to sit down with him so with his golden fingers at 92, he could touch me at 60 and transfer into my life another 30, 40 years. And I don't have to repent over the things that he's repenting over because I won't make those mistakes. God put us together and he put this church together and he puts the people together and everybody has an agenda. I get it. But I want, want these young men to, men most importantly, what I want them to do, I want them to live their life strong, honest, and pure. And I want them to be able to be themselves. And he turned to Victor. He said, who is this guy here? Victor said, I'm one of Bishop's assistants. He said, what do you do? He said, I sell insurance. He said, this man, me, said, this man has got to be in the presence of people that allow him to be who he really is. And if you can do that, God will bless everything your hand touches. That's the secret.
-hmm. That's the secret to success. To sit in the room with Johnny Washington or Jakes or a Mosley or whoever. And when I walk out of that room, what we discussed in that room for the few seconds is secure. And that's the secret to ministerial success. He that heareth the sum of the matter and keepeth it is a blessing. But he that run and tell it is a curse. Talk to Bethel and close us out tonight. This is one of the greatest times, one of the greatest seasons to be here at this ministry under this leader, under this anointing that God has placed. Don't miss your moment. Don't miss your time. Don't miss your season. Don't listen to contrary voices. The Bible says there are many voices, there are many voices in the wind. Let's not miss it. Let's not miss it this time. If you missed it before, repent, get back in place. Let's stay on track. God is carrying us to a great place. He's carrying us to a place of promise. He's carrying us to our expected end, and he's gonna do it. But you have to keep your hand in God's hand. Stay under this voice. God has assigned to you a voice, a voice, a voice, not many voices. God has given you a voice, a voice, a voice, a voice. Just remember that, a voice. Not your prayer partner, not your favorite, but your A voice. And if you follow the voice that God has assigned to you, you're going to get to that place. Amen. I think one scripture said there are many counselors but few fathers. Mm -hmm. I don't know how God can trust a man that didn't have a father properly, correctly, as a father. But it's how the touch of the Midas works. This is our greatest season. And on Sunday mornings, overseer, when I look across the congregation, the thing that blows me away is that I don't know these people. I don't either. And if I don't know them, you know. Right. It's a whole, you know, I know 20 of us in here, but that's it. What is God doing? A new thing. He's doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing. He's giving us a new And all of the mistakes we made in our first run, we wouldn't dare make them in our oh, second. No. Oh, no, no. I'm not even the person that I was then because I've been touched by the Midas. That's the Midas. And I've been touched by the Midas. And I've been touched, been by, touched by the Midas. By the I, I've been touched by the Midas. And I've been touched by the Midas. <laughs> and the Midas is touching us. And if that catches on within the congregation, everybody will be touching each other persons and the blessings of the Lord. All right, that's our time. We start talking like this. Woo! Father, in the name of Jesus, let a wind blow and the Midas touch, and the touch of the Midas float over this congregation and over this people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I think that's the greatest Bible study that we've had all uh, year long. And um, it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm full now. I'm gonna go and open up my tear docs and, 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 and let it flow. Um, there's healing in this word. There is uh, transfer in this word. There's ministry in this, in this word. All that God, all that God, promised us he's bringing it to pass I'm excited about my future and excited about what God is going to do and continue to do stick with us the half has not been told the tip of the iceberg is just emerging there's a mountain that is still uncovered and you're going to see it I'm speaking to our older members a spirit of rejuvenation is hitting you now. And so you will begin now to feel Thomas Whitfield. That's Thomas Whitfield. You always knew 
when I was getting ready to make a point and I was with Maurice Rogers. I'd start talking and he'd start playing that tune. And I told Whitfield, I said, that's gonna be my theme song. So you can take it, but if you make money on it, you know, you gotta give me a point. <laughs> And he's gone home to be with the Lord now. You don't hear Whitfield, do you? You hear Rogers. A spirit of rejuvenation, a spirit of transfer, a spirit of deposit is dropping into all of the members of this church. You're going to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The whole arm of God you won't have to put on, it's coming on you. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Joy, peace, and happiness for rejoicing. And grace, grace and favor for bills that haven't been paid. That's the God that we serve. And you're going to experience it in every area of your life. In Jesus' name, may God richly bless you and bless this house called Bethel. And let the touch of the Midas and the Midas touch be in this house to cover you, to safeguard you always. You're a butler now. Make sure that the person that is in front of you steps out looking wonderful. Make sure you have your stones in your pouch ready to take out any Goliath that comes against the establishment and the assignment that God has given you. That's my prayer tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Good. Amen. Amen and amen. All right, get your offering and get ready to sow your seed tonight. There are four ways that you can sow your seed. Amen. There are four ways you can sow your seed to Bethel Family Worship Center. The cash app is dollar sign BFWC515. Or you can text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Or you can click online giving to BethelFamily.org. Or you can even mail those seeds to 515 Dial Street, Durham, North Carolina, 27701. To sow those tithes now. Those of you that are watching online, those of you that are a part of Bethel, thank you for your support. Thank you so much for being a part of what we're doing. One more time, dollar sign, cash out, BFWC 515. Text Bethel to 844-888-9185. Uh, online giving, click BethelFamily.org or mail those seeds to 515 Dial Street, Durham, North Carolina, 27701. Amen. Thank you so much. All right. Taroma Seed. Get that Taroma Seed in there. Cash app, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at BishopBloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bethel to... Oh, I can't see. You can't see... <laughs> They can see, we can see. While I'm down here praying, Lord, search my heart. While I'm down here praying, Lord, search my heart. Search my heart. Oh, you know when I'm right there. You know when I'm wrong. You know whether I'm right or wrong. Monday through Friday, Warfare Ecology. If there's a 
need in your life where the food is a little short, we have a program here. If you need prayer, we're praying for you. Every Friday we close the week with our Sabbath prayer and every Sunday night we open up the week with prayer. Join us for our opening and closing of the week. And I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. The Midas is looking to touch you. The presence of the Lord is all around you and God is gonna bless you good. Four ways to sow your seed. Search me, search me, Lord. I said, search me, search me, Lord. Search me, search me, Lord, and then try me, try me, Lord. Search me, search me, search me, Lord. Oh, you know, Lord, get the rock right and Lord, when I'm wrong, you know whether I'm right, you know whether I'm wrong, you know whether I'm right or wrong, you know whether I'm right, you know when I'm wrong, you know whether I'm Enjoy the rest of your family, get some ice cream or something like that. And remember, we see you Sunday morning at Bethel, 9.45 at the altar, 10 o'clock in worship, 11.30 at Go 